This is a beginner's guide for Honkai Star Rail. So this game has a ton of stuff it throws at you, and I'm going to get you started on everything you need to know as a beginner in this game. So this is basically Genshin Impact, but not really. I mean, it's made by the exact same people. It's a gotcha game. It runs on similar systems, but it's definitely its own game. It's also really, really fun, but it's another pay-to-win game. If that bothers you at all, you need to know that. But anyway, so in this game, uh, there's a few things you know about. It depends if you're playing on mobile or what. Different. I mean, the UI is going to be the same, but how you, you go about using it is a little bit different. So like on PC, you hold down left alt to bring your mouse up, for example. Those things will be different, but uh, the number one thing that you need to know of is, is the icon on the top left. That just brings up like everything, and you select everything in here. Uh, so there's obviously a store. Now the store is where you can spend real life money, but also you can get uh, gotcha pools using these things called Stellar Jade. And there's a ton of different ways you can get Stellar Jade, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But yeah, there are so those are that's something you can get actually continuously as you play the game over time without spending real life money. So there are ways to progress very slowly without real life money. It's not totally insane. Okay, so that's the store in case you're curious. You got the friends list. If you want to know how to add a friend, uh, you need the UID and the UID is going to be up here. You can just copy it with this icon here and add friends. And then we have assignments. Now assignments, you can do two at a time. And what it is, is you send some of your characters on these different whatevers to get different materials. And then use these materials for different things later in the game. Or you go to this one, get, you know, things for XP, the things for our character XP, or the things for light cone XP, stuff like that. And when you do these, you can pick a time period. So how long are they gone for? And don't worry, when they're gone, it doesn't matter. You can still use them in battle and stuff. So that's not a big deal. Uh, make sure the recommended paths up here are, you know, compatible, though, to get bonus rewards. Uh, but yeah, so the more time you send them out for, the more rewards you get in this exponential. So... Uh, four hours times five is 20 hours, but you actually get eight instead of five times. So you get like a you get bonus basically if you send them out for longer. So what you do is you send them out for four hours at a time or eight hours at a time, depending on when you're going to be home or when you're going to be able to access the game. And then right before you go to bed, you send them on a 12 hour one, or maybe in the evening you send them on a 20 hour one and pick it up the next day. You know what I mean? To get those bonus ones. That'd probably be the way to go about doing assignments. All right. Uh, and a lot of these things, by the way, you're going to unlock them as you progress the game. If you haven't unlocked some of this stuff yet, just just do the main story just follow the main story and you'll unlock this stuff uh also before i continue with this stuff i was gonna go through these things one by one but uh, a quick little tip here is really important for new players um if you're having trouble progressing like the battles are too hard and stuff you can just really quick uh go into your this little button up here there's characters so again so in case you missed it, the button the very top right there's a little character button and you can look at all your characters uh, you can go look up like tier lists and stuff for this game before you invest, you know, resources into people. But uh, one of the ones I saw said that the main character is actually not bad. Later on, they get like a fire elemental they can use also instead of physical. And so what you can do is you can level them up down here. And what I would recommend doing as a newer player is you pick a character, go watch some tier list videos, pick a character that you're actually going to use long term. And then you go in here and just give them these items as you get them and boost them up to level, you know, 15, maybe all the way to 20 even. Um, and then that will make it so one of your characters does a ton of damage and is much tankier and stuff And that'll help you survive and be able to you know get through the beginning of the game a lot faster also one of the characters you start with in the beginning is March 7th and Until you get um, I think it was Natasha in The whatever I forget the name of the planet, but until you get her this person's your go-to she has the ability to um, If you look at her skills, she has the ability to uh, put a shield on people and also putting that shield on people makes them way more likely to be the one to get attacked. So it's basically the equivalent of healing. You just put that on her and then put it on someone else and put it on her. Literally all that she does whenever I'm battling. And it just prevents me from taking damage effectively. So that's something that'll help you out a lot in the early game. Okay, real quick, let's go through every single thing again now. But I wanted to make sure I could help you with that in case that, that was something you need to help with. Uh, travel log is uh, something really important. So go here to get like, you know, these different rewards. So you can go here seven different days and get free um star rail special passes uh there's different things in here there's a trailblazing wills one time they're they're um as you level up you can claim them so now that i'm level five i can claim this i could get uh 10 star rail passes uh just like that one time thing uh this one over here is when you complete certain things in the game so like obtained after completing the trailblazing mission lying in rust um, and then we got this, which is a little aptitude thing. So you have 20 days to do. Just go to each one, hit start trial. It has you do a battle. You do that, and you can get some uh, adventure logs and lives and credits and stuff. So that's something you can do real fast. Uh, you probably should do, I guess. And then we have simulated universe. This is something that 
you should uh, go and do like every single day. Uh, you'll unlock this in the main story. And um, it's just, I don't know, we'll get more of that Stellar Jade and different things with that. Uh, and then uh, you can go here to claim this character after stage level, level 21 and clearing Forgotten Hall Memory Stage 3. So these are just a little, you know, event things that you can go in there, check that out. Um, synthesize is something you'll unlock later on, level 14, Trailblazer level. Which, by the way, Trailblazer level, uh, that's equal to Adventure level in Genshin Impact or the main, your actual account level. Uh, so, and you'll need this in order to make, you know, increase world difficulty and things like that. Anyway, level 14 that you'll be able to synthesize things. You can take materials and make other things. You can make, uh, different items. You can buy these items at shops, different places. You can go over here and exchange materials for one of those. So I can take this. I have 82 of this. Say I need more of this. I only have one. Say I need more. I can go here and I can just add on two of these. And then, um, I can synthesize. And then I can swap out different materials. Uh, you can also do this to, uh, you know, with you can break down relics to get different things and, and, you know, synthesize things. So that's something that's way later on. It's not a beginner thing, really, though. So I'm not going to go too much detail on that. Go to your achievements, by the way. Achievements, you can get some of those Stellar Jades we talked about. Uh, so there's different achievements for different things. And as you get them, you get one-time shots of Stellar Jade. So there's a bunch of Stellar Jade that you can get in there. Definitely go ahead and go collect it whenever you can. Uh, we got messages, which is like uh, text messages equivalent. And you can go here and see different things that are going on in the story and stuff. And it'll it'll have the dialogue for different things. I don't want to click them because I'm not ready to progress on these. I want to actually pay attention when I click one of these. But, you know, make sure you go in there if you want need more side quests or need more things to do. Or you're just feeling like, you know, you want to go find something else to do. Uh, we got Nameless Honor. This was unlocked, I want to say like level 12 or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, whatever it was. Maybe it was unlocked from the beginning. I remember it told me about it like level 12-ish. Okay, so this is the Battle Pass equivalent in this game. And the way that this works, again, it's pretty standard stuff. If you buy the Battle Pass, uh, you can buy the Battle Pass for, what was it, $10? And then uh, this one immediately raises you 10 levels if you spend the $20, though. And the way that you level this up, if you don't have, you don't have the Battle Pass, you don't get the top ones. If you have the Battle Pass, you get both. But the way you level this up is up at the top. There's these tabs. And you go here, and you have dailies, weeklies, and monthlies, basically. And different ones give different amounts of nameless XP. So go here every day and get these ones. So logged into the game, uh, dispatched one of the people in the dispatch things I just showed you a little bit ago, uh, reach 500 on daily training activity. Okay, so different things in here you can, um, you know, you don't have to navigate if you're lost on what it is you need to do or how to do it. And then that will um, bring you to the right screen for that. So do that, do the weekly ones, acclaim them and stuff like that. And then that will level up your battle pass and you'll be able to get all these rewards. Something you definitely need to be doing if you want to play this game long term. And then uh, this third tab is if you do uh, the entire battle pass or well, if you're not the battle pass, if you um, unlock it level 30, you get to pick one of these uh, light cones of your choice. So at least for this particular season, maybe it'll be different for the next season. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's the battle pass called Nameless Honor. You can access here in the phone thing. Um, we got warps, which is gotcha pulls, and you can select different ones in order to, you know, pull different ones. And different ones use different tickets, so, like, this one uses the silver tickets, these ones use the gold special tickets or whatever, so keep that in mind when you're picking which tickets, they're not picking which tickets, they're, you know, just keep that in mind. It's, it's relevant, okay? And you can check more, you know, view details on each one to find out more info, although that didn't really, I was just, okay, there we go, look at it, it just hard froze my game. Uh, but yeah, you can look at drop rates and all this crazy stuff and whatever. If anything you want to see in there, you can do that. Um, so that's where you do gotcha pulls, get new characters and stuff like that. And then uh, we have characters over here, which is where you can go to that one menu. You can also access this from just the button at the top right, uh, which is characters. And in here you can look at the different characters. You can see their stats. You can see what skills they have. You can see what their path is. And then you click it to see what that path means. Uh, and then... Other than that, um, you have more stats if you really want to look at them. And you have this down here, which is a light cone, and you can switch it out with something else. And so the way light cones work is so, like, my main character, the main character is a path of destruction. So ideally, I want to put a light cone on that is for destruction, which I think I only have one right now. If it's not the same as your character, then you won't get the ability it has right here, which in this case increases my attack and skill damage by 20%. I won't get that unless the path matches my character, so keep that in mind. But even if you don't have that, these things will increase HP, attack, and defense. So, you know, it's better to have one even if you don't have one that matches than not have one at all. Also, you can enha enhance them, which is leveling them up, using um, these different items or using other ones that you don't want to, you know, use anymore. 
Uh, but you can put these on, and then, it, you know, you get bonus XP and then hit level up to level them up. You can also salvage them, by the way. Uh, so keep that in mind. Leveling up is nice. It actually can give you a ton of stats in the early game, especially if you're having trouble with anything. Uh, and then we got Superimpose, which is something you'll deal with later on, leveling up the light cones. Okay, so that's not really beginner things. So I'm not really going to worry about that. Uh, then we got Traces, which is kind of like skill tree, so... Uh, you'll be able to get different things in here. You'll need to do character ascensions in order to unlock higher levels higher levels of these, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you'll be able to get more things, uh, bonus things, you know, deal physical damage equal 50% triple tri tri laser attack to a single enemy with farewell hit, basic attack, different things like that. You can unlock tons of different things with that. And then there's Idolons, which I think are just uh, story-based things. Uh, so when you get far enough into the story then you'll unlock some of these because you'll get like you know certain parts of the game you'll get certain things uh and you'll be able to get shadows of destruction uh that you i mean you won't all get all of them from just the story but you know you, it's just basically you get this item shadow destruction you can use it to unlock different edelons or whatever for each character and each character has their own edelons so keep that in mind so be very careful using those because you want to use them on a character that you actually want to use long term Okay, uh, we got the Interrestrial Guide, which is basically the same thing as just hitting the button up at the top right here. And up here, we have these three different tabs, and this is an extremely important part of the game. So, this is a one-time thing. We can go through here, and we can do all these things, and we can get Trailblazer XP, we can get Stellar Jade, so I need to go purchase one shop in the world, purchase one I'm in the world shop, act very level characters, traces three to uh, four times. I do those and then it'll get me to the next part. I can look at previous ones, but you can't go ahead and look at the next ones. And then this next one is daily training. These are daily missions. And you're going to want to do these every day because they give rewards. They give Stellar Jade every day. They give Trailblazer XP every day. So go in here and do five of these every single day. And then go in here and claim them every single day. It's extremely important. Always do that. You'll unlock this uh around level 12 again. It was when you get in some, you'll go to some ice world. You know what I mean? And somewhere in there. All right, and then we got survival index. So uh, this is from doing that simulated universe thing, which I'll show you in a sec. And then there's also this, which is these calcs, these little like golden things. I can just show you real fast. Let me teleport to one. So there are these things, and you can spend these points in order to do these challenges to get trailblazer XP, adventure logs, etc., different things. Okay, and you'll unlock different ones uh, when you level up your equilibrium level, which is like world level. You level up your um. What's it, whatever it was called, Trailblazer level. Um, so these use Trailblaze power in order to do. And Trailblaze power is basically stamina. It's a resource that you regenerate over time, just as time passes. Uh, you get one every six minutes, I think it was. And then I think it takes 18 hours to fully refresh all 180 of it. And later on, you'll get some item, or you'll get something called an Immersifier. And then if you don't have time to play the game, but you don't want to be capped on your stamina, you can convert it into Immersifiers, which is something you can just deal with later on in the game. Uh, but don't ever let your, if you can help it, don't ever let your Trailblaze power cap, because then you're just wasting resources that would otherwise, you know, help you to progress your game. Okay, and so then back to... Uh, so that was everything in the interest squad data bank is just checking on different things it just shows you like what all the things are in the game you look at all the characters in here uh you can look at all the different light cones uh you can just look at everything that's in the game enemy creatures and just see what everything is what it does more information about it like a lore book basically and then we have the bookshelf which is just all the different things that you picked that you can collect different books as you go around the game and uh, if you really want to read them and read the lore, you can go in there and you can actually, you know, read all of these and just see all the different ones that you've collected from different places. We've got Herta Space Station, Darilo 6, and just go and read every single thing that you picked up. That's also you can find out if you're still missing things from that region and go look and try to find them then. Uh, tutorials, you can go look back at any tutorials in case you got confused or anything. You can go back and look at anything. Uh, team Setup is also a button that's up here on the top right. And this is, you have different loadouts and you can pick the different characters. And so you can pick different, you know, team comps and then uh, go in here and, uh, uh, you know, swap out your teams. You can even name them different things. So that's how you swap characters for battle. That's how you use different ones there. And then we have the inventory, which again is also a button up here. And inventory is where you have all these extra items and stuff. You can also see all the things that you use, all the resources that you use in these other tabs and stuff. Here's all the light cones. I don't need relics yet on this account, but there's relics, other materials. You know, all the things are in here. We got mission items and valuables 
And also, this is where you would go in order to use uh, important item like this. So if you're out of combat and you want to heal up a party member, you can go ahead and use an item like that, heal them up, instead of having to go back to one of the heal things. So getting one of those, getting one of these out of shops, not a bad idea early game. All right, so that is that menu. That's everything that's going on there. And then we got missions. This is just a quest log. You can go in here and you can swap out your active quest. You can see what all the rewards are. Uh, go to different tabs. Organize by tabs. Trailblaze mission, companion missions, daily missions, adventure missions, etc. All right, so that's that. And then um, navigation is just showing you where your objective is for whatever you know, whatever you have selected your objective. Uh, which also brings me to the map. I don't know if I have it in here, but you can hit M in order to go to the map, or what I just clicked on to go to the map. Uh, and then you can go click the button up there to go to the actual world map here and then pick, you know, Herda Space Station, for example. And then I can go in here and I pick Base Zone, Storage Zone. I can click one of these. I can teleport to it to fast travel. So that is, uh, and you click there to get a different view of the map. So that is how you fast travel. You can also see here all the treasures you found. And, you know, if you found the warp trot or whatever, I can check that there. Uh, so you can just, I don't know, look through everything in there and, um, that's how you like navigate the entire map basically in this game. All right. So then there's bug report, physical community, special events. Uh, there's no ongoing events or special events. So that's that. Uh, and then we have this, which is like the news board. There's news and notices. If you want to see what's going on with the game. Uh, and then we have this, which is your mail. This is a really important tab, by the way, this is a mail tab. Uh, this is where you go to like claim your pre-registration reward, where to pick up any of these things that go to your mail and stuff to claim all things from events and stuff. Then we got settings and picture mode. Now picture mode is actually important because sometimes a daily quest will want you to take a picture or something. You go in here, click this button, and then just exit. And that, that actually can be a daily mission sometimes is to just do take a picture of literally anything. So keep that in mind. That is uh, very, very relevant. That covers the basics of the game, but I want to give you some combat tips before we part ways here in this video. Uh, so as a beginner, there's some things that you need to know about to make the game way easier in combat. So first off, at the bottom right, you'll see down here my attack and this, this ability, and we have the, my primary like pre-combat ability. So in this case, uh, this character has Restore, which will heal everybody some. Uh, you can also hit your number keys over here or click the people over here to swap between which ones you're active, which one you're playing as. And that'll also change what element they are. So this person's Ice, for example, this person's Wind, this person's Fire. Uh, and then also, each person has their own abilities for how they initiate combat like this like the technique one and it, it tells you what happens if you start a battle using this person um and then the other thing to keep in mind with this is people have these other abilities like that uh which like the easiest one to explain this with would be this guy and uh, i can hit that this button and i'll position. get an attack boost and it makes so if i go into battle now the next battle i'm in i'll have an attack boost at the start of the battle so make sure you use those. You only do three at a time and it's shared between characters. And now that he used it, everybody only has two left. Make sure you're using those. They get recharged by, you know, those things over there and stuff like that. So just, you know, before a big battle, if there's a boss or something, definitely use a bunch of those. Like use three different ones from, you know, one from each person or something before you go into the battle. Now also, when you go up to an enemy, you can see what type it's, uh, what types it can be weak against. So fire, wind, physical, and ice. And so then I could swap to a character who has ice, like this person. And if I start the battle with this person who's ice, it's going to say that they were weak, you know, weakness. They were weak to the ice, and that's a better way to start a battle. Let's start off with that technique that I showed you a second ago. It started off with a freeze there. So that's really important for starting off battles, preserving your HP as you're running through places or just, you know, winning really hard battles. Down here, if there's any confusion in here, what's going on? We got skill points at the bottom. There's You start with three in a battle. Uh, using this ability up here is for each character is going to use a skill point. And using a basic attack, it's going to restore a skill point. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Skill point, um, you know, management is really important in battles. Uh, so another, the big thing with this game is uh, toughness and breaking. So the enemies have two bars. The red is health. White is toughness. And if you attack them with an element they're weak against. So this one's weak against wind and fire. And this guy I'm using right now uses wind. So if I attack him with this, then it's going... And if I do enough damage, just based on how much damage I do, how tough the enemy is, all these things. But this enemy is not very tough. And he's weak to me, so I can go ahead and hit him, and it'll break his, um, it'll just break him, which makes him receive bonus damage, and it'll activate a special effect depending on the character. Now, that guy in particular, that put damage over time on him now, so every time he attacks, he takes extra damage, you know, so different things. So it's really important to try to break the enemies as you are fighting. Another thing to really think about here is the ultimate ability, so these big buttons next to people, this person's, the only one who has a charge right now is this person. Now, you get these back from being attacked and from attacking people. Uh, so each person has their own different ultimate that does different things. This person, for example, buffs everybody's speed. 
and if you click it it will actually interrupt the battle so you can use it now if someone's attacking it you have to wait till they're done so if that guy was attacking me and i hit it even if the next someone else is going to go next it'll let me do my ultimate and then we'll continue the normal turn order and that's really really important for a few reasons so for example uh march 7th that's literally this person's name the, the ice person down there her ability can freeze targets like that guy on the right and if they're frozen what happens is when it's their turn they won't attack instead they'll unfreeze and it'll reset their turn so you can actually save your life sometimes by interrupting with an ultimate where you realize like oh they're all about to attack i'm gonna die if they all attack and you get they to one of them attacks and then they attack March 7th. She gets her ultimate and you use it to interrupt the other two. Use her ultimate. It freezes the other two. And now they don't attack and you get another turn and maybe you survive. So interrupting with your ultimate abilities, depending on which ultimate you're interrupting with, can be massive. Uh, so that's a really important thing that makes combat way easier if you keep that in mind uh, when you're actually trying to fight. Also, keep my top left turn order. It goes top to bottom. So after this person's March 7th, then main character, and then all three enemies attack. So you can look at that in order to get a better idea of you know what you need to do next and how to try to interrupt people and stuff like that uh and that is and also you click this button down here and you can look at details you can see what status effects are on you which nobody has any status effects because the battle just started and you can click this tab up here look at the enemies and see what status is they're affected by so i can look at this guy and i just put wind shear on him for and it has two turns remaining and he takes wind damage at the beginning of each of his turns and then this one is frozen. It's one turn remaining. You can't take action. And he takes additional ice damage at the beginning of the turn. You can also look at the skills that the enemies have to see what their attacks will do when they attack you. So that's also really nice. You can also see down here their weaknesses. And you can also see their resistances, like what they take less damage from. Uh, so all that is very important. Uh, knowing all that and keeping that in mind is really important in battling. We also have buttons up here. There's an auto battle button which will let the uh, you know your team just do everything for you so if you're way over leveled for an area you can just do auto battle and just kind of let it do its thing tab out of the game and tab back in when it's done with the battle or something like that so that's another nice thing to know about really really important and then you can also click the little speed up button that's gone now but there's a little like double arrow button that'll also speed up the battle so that's really good later on for making you know to progress the game faster really really important to know that so i think last thing here was stellar jade i want to talk about real fast so uh, you can go over here in the space station at, um, what's his name? The master control zone. Go here. And over here is where you go to do these, um, simulated universes. Go over here to this index and you can see your blessings. Uh, you can click this button and then you can see all these different blessings. Well, if you get enough unique blessings, then you'll actually get, um, some stellar jade as a reward. Uh, it's right here. I forgot, I forgot the button. Button's right here. And you can do this up to 22, and each one will give you, you know, Stellar Jade. So do that, you know, one time. Get a bunch of Stellar Jade. Get some free characters. A uh, Curio you'll unlock after completing Domain Elite in World 3. After that, those same exact concept. You get different Curios, and you can get different rewards like that of uh, Stellar Jade. So there's some Stellar Jade there. That'll get you some more gacha pools. Another hidden one you wouldn't even think about is you go to your characters. And when you go to level them up, well, you're not going to do it there. But when you go to level up, there's this little magnifying glass here. Click that. And it shows you get rewards for ascending the character. So when you ascend them to where level 20 to 30 or whatever, hit level 20 and then you ascend them, uh, it will give you a star rail pass. The next one does not. And then the one after that does. And so 20, 40, and 60 will all give uh, star rail passes so you can do another pool. Now, this is really only worth it for the first one because the ascension materials only use Thief's Instinct, which is really easy to get. Um, so, and also just, you know, just the cost. So I wouldn't really do the 40 or the 60 unless you're actually leveling a character that you want to level or you're just like super late game or something or you're just spending insane real life money or something. I don't know. But otherwise, at that point, you won't really need these special far rail passes anyway. So mainly it's just that first one's the only one that's really worth going out of your way for. The other ones are only if you're already leveling. But hey, there's some there's some rail passes there that you can use. Those are super, super, super good. And I'll run through it, but just a quick reminder of the different ways. This button up here, you can go here, claim a bunch of stuff in here, go in here, level up, you know, check out everything in there, try to get things in there to get more rail passes, Stellar Jade. This tab right here is the battle pass. You'll also get, um, you know, star rail passes and stuff in here. So do your battle pass dailies and then we have um this tab right here uh do simulated universes every week before the reset get all your weekly points that'll get you some more stellar jade and stuff uh and it'll get you um under star rail pass 
Um, and then another thing that you can do is, you know, you do the daily training to get more Stellar Jade. And then you go over to the operating brief and just do your, like, one-time things in order to get more Stellar Jade. Uh, so that's another way to get random star, you know, star rail passive things in there. Don't forget to check on your achievements. And you can get one-time Stellar Jades from there. Uh, and those are like the main, main easy ways to get Stellar Jade. I'm probably forgetting something on a recap, but yeah. So you can do all those, get Stellar Jade. And then again, in case you forgot, you go to the store to spend that Stellar Jade, Stellar Trade, and buy uh, diff the passes depending on what you need. I, I think the special passes, don't quote me on this, but the special passes are better maybe because you can get certain, you know, one-time character pulls, but... I'm not actually super expert on that one, so so go look up different guides for you know why what why and what to pull and what you know tier lists and things like that. Other than that, man, I think that's pretty much everything I got for you as a beginner guide. Like you know, once you get further along, you know you're gonna be looking for an advanced guide, not a beginner's guide. So at this point, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you didn't know where to start or didn't know what dailies and stuff to do, uh, hopefully now you have a better idea. My my final parting advice here is, uh, if you're gonna play this as a free to play player or someone who just doesn't spend very much money then you're going to want to be patient you're just going to want to you know do your dailies every day really think and do research before you spend a bunch of your resources on something but the game does give out a steady amount of resources for you to spend so you can just go ahead and keep getting resources of free to play player and then slowly progressing your game if that's fun to you if you enjoy this you know genre of game that's the way to go about it definitely just be patient and save yourself some money just do all the dailies and things like that uh, my biggest suggestion just straight up is just do the dailies the dailies are such good rewards and the weeklies and stuff get all your stellar jades don't let yourself over cap on trailblaze power spend your trailblaze power level up faster using it do your daily trainings uh get through all the operation briefs at a reasonable pace without wasting resources and stuff uh, do your battle pass, which was the nameless honor. Do the nameless honor, you know, dailies, weeklies, and monthlies equivalents. Uh, you know, get all farm all the achievements. Don't go out of your way for the achievements, though, unless it's, like, easy. Don't spend resources to get them. But then, if you know, if you can get them reasonably, then go ahead and get those. Uh, go do all the quests. Go do all the main story quests. Like, that's really your objective as a beginner is to go through all that stuff and get your feet on the ground, get some bearings about what's going on in this game and stuff. Uh, and that's really... How to do it as a beginner so hopefully it helped you out guys this has been a beginner's guide i really hope this guide helped you out and got you you know settled in in honkai star rail and yeah hopefully helped you out man now you know what to do what to focus on and how to progress as a free-to-play player in honkai star rail